To follow along with the written version of this pattern, use the link on screen now, in the description below, or by going to clubcrochet.com slash bellbag. Hey there, it's Louie, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to crochet a little miniature bell bag uh, from Animal Crossing. Really quick before I get going, if you like this pattern and you want more Animal Crossing themed patterns like it, like maybe Mr. Gulliver here, look how cute he is. Uh, it looks like he has probably found his transponder by now, hopefully we've helped him. Or this giant bell bag that I like using as a um, project bag for my creations. Right now there's a lot of stuffing in it. Um, so I can grab stuffing really easy. But if you like these extra Animal Crossing themed patterns, um, use the link on screen now in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash Animal Crossing. Also, if you like this pattern, uh, consider becoming a Club Crochet member. Members get early access to future patterns. They got access to this pattern a few weeks in advance, as well as exclusive access to the entire Club Crochet library, which includes Mr. Gulliver here and a bunch of other patterns like dinosaurs, ogres, um, there is this cool uh, treasure chest mimic. I come out with new ones every single month. So there are um, actually hundreds of them now. Here there's this stegosaurus pattern, things like that. Um, members get early access to that kind of stuff. They get kits mailed directly to their door with all the materials that they need to make um, that month's creation, whatever we're making. Uh, and um, memberships start at only $5 a month, and you can learn more at clubcrochet.com. Oh, and you can even get a free trial. Also, if you want that uh, big bell bag pattern, um, make sure to subscribe down below and hit that little bell icon, and you'll get a notification when that pattern comes out on this channel. So it will be available on this channel eventually for free, um, but it will take a while. Uh, you'll get early access if you're a member. Okay, well... Without further ado, let's talk about the materials that you need for this pattern. Uh, for this pattern, I'm using all worsted weight yarn. I'm using 100% cotton yarn for the gold of the bell bag and the brown of the star. As uh, And I'm using, I think, acrylic yarn for the red of the ribbon here. Uh, I found this acrylic yarn was just the perfect color for me, so that's what I'll be using. Uh, you can also, instead of using brown yarn uh, for the star, you can use a felt. Uh, you can just cut a, one out of felt and glue it on or sew it on. That's what I've done right here. Um, in addition to the yarn, you'll need a size G, 4 millimeter crochet hook. Um, that's if we're using worsted weight yarn. If you're using larger yarn, you might want a larger crochet hook. You'll need a darning needle. I like using a crimped end darning needle like this. It helps me sew in the ends. Uh, you'll also need a pair of scissors and a small amount of stuffing. That's pretty much it, though. Uh, this pattern is available for members. I mean, it's accessible for uh, or I mean accessible for beginners. So I'll be trying to go rather slowly in this video, so that if you're a beginner, you can kind of uh, still make it. But if you're an absolute beginner and you have never crocheted before, um, I consider going through Crocheting 101. That's my beginner how to crochet series. You can find that at crocheting101.com. Um, you can also find the video series in my YouTube channel. So if you just click the little Club Crochet YouTube channel, channel thing there, you should be able to find the uh, How to Crochet series from that. All right, well, enough talking. Without further ado, let's get hooking. Let's gonna, we're going to start by crocheting uh, this star here. Okay, so for the star, we're going to be using our brown yarn. Um, again, if you want, you can uh, make it out of felt instead, uh, but I suggest making the bag before you cut the felt so you make sure that you have the felt uh, exactly the right size. Um, this, pa this part of the pattern will be a little bit tricky, but I'll be going nice and slow for it. Okay, so we're going to start with the magic loop method. Now, for the magic loop method, we're going to hold our palm out, and we're going to take our yarn and wrap it around our index finger three times. So one, two, and three. So there's three pieces there. And we're going to take this end and grab it with our middle and uh, ring finger, and we're going to pull our fingers in like this to create a finger gun. And you want to grab this tail end with that hand. So it'll create a little finger gun there. And then you can take your crochet hook and we're going to go under these two first loops just like this. One and two. We're going to grab a hold of that last bit of yarn there and pull it under those two front loops. Under the two loops right there. And we're going to grab a hold of the other end of that which is attached to the yarn. And we're going to pull it through that loop 
which will create a chain and lock this loop into place so we can pull it off of our finger and it shouldn't come apart. Okay, so for our one and only round of this crocheted star, we're going to be working into the center of this magic loop. We're going to do our crochet stitches around these two ends here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a single crochet. So for that, we're going to go into the loop, yarn over with the end that's attached to the yarn and pull that under the loop, then yarn over again and pull through the two loops on the hook to make a single crochet, just like that. And then we're going to do a stitch called the mini peacock. So for that, you're going to chain two. So we're going to yarn over and pull that loop through the loop on our hook like that. We're going to do that twice. So one, yarn over again, pull it under, two, and then into the back loop of these chains. So if you look at the back of this chain, you'll see this little bump right there. Okay, so right there. We want to get our crochet hook into that. Now it can be a little bit difficult to just uh, squeeze your crochet hook in there. So if you have a darning needle, you can just grab it with the darning needle first. It might make it a little easier to know where you're going. And we'll just kind of replace the darning needle with our crochet hook. You might need your nail to get that crochet hook really in there though. Once you're into that back loop, we're going to do a slip stitch. So we're going to yarn over and pull that through the chain and then again through the loop on the hook and that'll make a nice little point just a tiny little point there we're going to repeat doing that five times in a row so a single crochet then a mini peacock five times in a row so let's do a second one here do a single crochet so into the loop pull a loop through yarn over again over the loop and pull that through the two on the hook Okay, so there's our second single crochet. Now let's do our second mini peacock. Chain two, one, and two. Pull that a little tighter. And then into this back hump right here, this little back loop. Right, when you get your nail to get it in there, we're going to do a slip stitch. So we're gonna yarn over, pull that through the chain, and then through the loop on the hook like that. Okay, so you can see our how our process is going. So we're gonna do five of those. So there's our second one. Let's do another one. We'll just single crochet. Let's get this out of the way. And then we'll mini peacock. So we chain two, one and two, into the back loop of the first one right here, and slip stitch. So we yarn over, pull under that back loop, and then under the one on the hook. So there's three. You can see how it's one, two, three, creating those little points. Go into the loop, do our fourth single crochet, yarn over and pull through two, and then another mini peacock. So we chain two, one and two, pull it a little tighter, and go into that back loop of the first chain that you made right there. Just slip stitch. There's four. Let's do one more single crochet into the magic loop. And then chain two, one, and two. Pull that a little tighter. Get into the back loop right here. And slip stitch one. One, two, there you go. Now you should have five little points. And what we can do now is we can close this magic loop. So to do that, we're going to pull this tail end just a little bit, which will reveal which one of these loops is attached to this tail end. So we're gonna pull it slightly and you'll see this one is attached to it. Now the one that's attached to this tail end, you wanna pull from the base, from where the tail end is coming out, pull down from that base, and that's going to tighten the other loop. See how it's tightening that other loop? You wanna pull that relatively tight, and then you wanna take the tail and pull the tail, which will tighten the other loop. And it'll create a nice closed hole for your piece. Okay. Now to finish up this star, we're going to grab that, this is the first single crochet that we made. You can see the little V at the top here. See this little V? That's our first single crochet we made. And we want to work into that first single crochet, we want to do a slip stitch. Okay, so we're going to get our crochet hook into under those two Vs right there. Yarn over, pull it under that V, and then pull it through the loop on the hook, like that. 
we can cut the yarn. You want to leave a long enough end to sew it, this onto our piece. So about mm. that long is probably fine, about like a foot, maybe two feet. And you can just pull that all the way through with your crochet hook, just like, there we go. And to finish this up, we want to hide this end into our piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to thread this end on a needle, like so. And we're going to go into the back, into the back of this, um, this first uh, point. So like that and pull it through. Don't pull it too tight. And then we're going to go into the place where this stitch, uh, where this yarn is coming out of. So if you pull it, let's loosen it up a little bit and you can kind of see, see where it's coming out of. We want to go right back into that same place. Let's tighten it a little bit. We're going to go back into where it's coming out of and we're just going to hide it into our piece just a little bit. So like right, mm, just a few stitches like that. I'm just like hiding it into some of the threads there. Okay. And that creates a little hidden end so you can't really tell where that is. And now you have a itty bitty crocheted star. I'm going to be doing tutorials uh, in the future for other size stars. So like bigger stars. Um, I have a bunch of them over here actually. This is a slightly bigger stuffed star that I've been working on, things like this. So I'll be coming out with more tutorials for stars in the future. So if you want to um, keep track of that, again, make sure to subscribe down below and hit that little bell icon or create an account on clubcrochet.com so you can join the email list. Okay, so we're gonna place this star to the side and now we're going to start on our um, actual bag. So for the bag, we're going to be using our gold yarn and we're going to do a nether magic loop. So we're going to wrap around our index finger three times. So one, two, and three. Grab that with our middle and ring finger and pull that in. We're gonna go under the first two loops here and then yarn over with the third one and pull that under the first two loops and then yarn over with that same end right here and pull that through the loop you just made to create a chain. Now we can pull this off of our finger. That's how we're going to do a magic loop again. I have a tutorial where I teach that in a little bit uh, cleaner detail. You can find that at clubcrochet.com slash magic loop. Okay, so for our um, bell bag here, we're going to be um, working our first round into this magic loop, and we're going to work six single crochets into this magic loop. So we're going to go into the center of the magic loop, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two, and we're going to do six of those. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. And now we can pull this magic loop tight. So again, we pull this end to find which one tightens. You see this, this inner one here. We want to pull that inner one down from where that tail end's coming out of to tighten that first loop and then pull the tail end to tighten the second loop. And that creates a nice closed hole there. There we go. Okay, so before we continue uh, to round two, we want to get a stitch marker so that we can keep track of where the rounds begin and end. So just any kind of extra thread of yarn will work perfectly for this. I have some blue yarn here. So let's just grab a little bit of that blue yarn, just about like that much. If you have a little plastic stitch marker, that will work as well. What we'll do is we'll work around this for our first stitch. We can also cut this tail end kind of close. You don't want it to be too close, about like right mm, there's probably fine, just so it gets out of our way. What we'll do is we'll place this stitch marker, grab with our thumb, and we're gonna place it like that. So that when we work our first single crochet, we work around this tail end. Okay, so for round two, what we're going to do is we're going to start into the first single crochet that we made, which you can find right here. Um, if you count back six stitches, you can find that. If you look at these Vs, we've got one V, two V, three, four, five, and six. So this is our first one. You want to get under both of those loops of the V, like that. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to do an increase stitch into that V. An increase means that we're just going to do two single crochets into the same place. So we're going to yarn over, pull that under the first two loops, and then yarn over again and pull through the two loops to create a single crochet. And we're going to do that twice into the exact same spot. So if you look at where that V is pointing down to, just place it right at the base of that stitch, like that. Yarn over again, pull under, and then yarn over and pull through two. And that'll create two single crochets into the same stitch, which is called an increase. So we're going to do an increase into each stitch around, so that's six increases total. If you're doing six increases total and there's two stitches per increase, that's going to bring you up from six stitches from round one to 12 stitches in round two. So at the end of this round, you should have 12 stitches around. So that was our first increase. Let's go to our next stitch right here and do a second increase. Yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two. Now before I finish this increase, I want to show what an increase versus a, a regular single crochet looks like. So if you look here, this is an increase, and you can see there's two little Vs, both into the same place. This is just a regular single crochet, not just two, but just one, and you'll find there's just one V into the same place. And after we get done with uh, round three, I'll show you that again in detail so you can kind of see where the difference of a single crochet and an increase is. All right, but let's continue here. So we have our first single crochet of that second increase. Let's do another one into the same place. Okay, so there's two increases. Here's going to be our third increase. There's one single crochet and two single crochets into the same place. Here's our fourth one. One and two. There's a fifth one right here. Six and seven. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm counting that totally off, but <laughs> there's another increase. And here's our final increase right here. One and two. All right, so now you should have 12 stitches around. And the way you can count stitches is if you count from the where your loop is coming out right here, here's a little V. And each one of these V's is a stitch, and you'll end at where this blue yarn is coming out of, or wherever your stitch marker is. So we'll count back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and here is 12, which is perfect. We should have exactly 12 stitches. Okay, let's pull it a little tighter. We're going to pull this blue yarn out and go over, and we're going to crochet around this blue yarn again to mark where the end of that round is. And for round three, which is what we're on now, we're just going to be, again, working in a spiral. We're going to do a single crochet into the first stitch. So into under this V right here, we're going to do just one single crochet. And into the next stitch, which is right here, we're going to do another increase. So we're going to go into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two for a single crochet. And we're going to do two into that same stitch for an increase. There you go. So we got one single crochet and then one increase. And we're going to repeat that process six times total. Okay, so we're going to do a second repeat here. So we did a single crochet, then an increase. Now let's do another one, a single crochet into the next stitch. Let's get a little bit more yarn here. And then an increase into the next stitch right here. There's our second repeat. Let's do another repeat. Here's our third, a single crochet, and then an increase. Let's keep going. And this should, this should bring you up. There's a single crochet and an increase. This should bring you up from 12 stitches that was in round two to 18 stitches. So the, at the end of this round, round three here, we should have 18 stitches around. There's our fifth increase. Let's do our sixth repeat. One single crochet and then one increase right here. And before I continue, let me show you a couple things. First off, you should count around. You should have 18 stitches around perfectly. And let me show off what a single crochet and an increase looks like. If you look at our piece here, you should see, see these little Vs? One, and then see how there's two Vs right here? These two are an increase. This one is a single crochet. And so if you go around, you should find there's a single crochet, there's an increase, 
and they both go into the same place. So you can go crochet. See how there's this little thing separating the stitches? Here's the increase. So that's how you can tell where what's a single crochet and what's an increase. This gets a little bit easier to tell um, the more you crochet. So uh, as a beginner, it might be difficult to tell that, but as you go further, it, it gets a little easier to tell. Okay, so let's continue our piece. We're gonna take our stitch marker and place it over our piece so that we crochet around it for our next round. And for our next three rounds, round four, five, and six, three rounds in a row, we'll just be single crocheting into each stitch all the way around. And there should be 18 stitches per round. So we're just gonna go into the next stitch right here and do a single crochet. We're just gonna do a single crochet into each one of these stitches. And again, 18 stitches around. I'm gonna go a little bit quicker now because these three rounds are relatively easy and we'll just talk it through as we go. And at, while we do these three uh, rounds of single crochets, you'll see that our piece will slowly start to get a little bit of height to it. So we kind of made the, the width of how long we want our piece, and now we're giving it a little bit of height. And again, if you like this video, um, please like and subscribe down below. Um, uh, it really helps the channel out. Uh, give it a comment. Let me know if you're making it. And if you do end up crocheting this piece and you'd like to share it with me, um, please post it with hashtag club crochet on Instagram or into the Facebook group. You can find links to my Instagram and Facebook group into the description below. If you post it there, I'd love to see um, some finished crocheted uh, bell bags. I think they're so cool and it's just so cool to see uh, people actually make something that I made. I don't know. I just think it's cool. So we finished our first round. That's the end of round, um, I believe, four. So we can pull our stitch marker up. We'll just keep doing our single crochets. We're on round five now. And again, that's three rounds of just single crochets in a spiral. And make sure to check your rounds so that you still only have 18 stitches around at the end of each of the rounds. Let's get a little bit more yarn. Okay, we're almost done with round five here, which is our second round of just single crochets. And I know I'm going kind of quick, so feel free to pause and play the video. Okay, so there's the end of round five. Let's keep going. We're gonna pull our stitch marker up and around. We're gonna work around it. This is our last round of just single crochet stitches. Round six, just single crochet stitches. Also, if you look down, if you look, um, actually, let me show you at the end of this round. I'll show you how you can tell that you did three rounds of single crochets. Just in case you lost your stitch marker or, um, or you just want to learn how you can tell the difference between a single single crochet and an increased stitch. Um, I have a pretty easy way that I can tell that. And that's how I do a lot of my patterns without any stitch marker at all. And um, I can just tell where I'm at by looking at the rounds before. Okay, so we're got two more stitches here for round six. One and two. Now before we continue, let me show you how you can tell that you've done three rounds. If you look down, there's our single crochet we just made. Here's the one from the round before. Here's the one from round, so this is round six. There's five, there's four, and here's round three. And you can see there's an increase because two of these stitches are going into the same spot. And there's not this little marker in between these two stitches. So if you look at that, you'll find three rounds. One, two, three of all single crochets. And there should be single crochets all the way around. And again, make sure to count this at the end of this round if you um, are unsure if you have 18 stitches around. Okay, so that's the end of round six. We're gonna pull our stitch marker over and we're going to do um, round seven now. For round seven, we're going to be decreasing, which means we're gonna make it a little bit smaller. Um, so to do that, we're going to start by doing four single crochets. So four single crochets. So we'll go into the next stitch. We do one, two, three, and four. 
And after your four single crochets, we're going to do something called an invisible decrease. For that, we're going to be working into, instead of working under both loops, like we've been doing under both of these loops here, we're going to only work under these front loops. Okay, so into the front loops of the next two stitches, we're going to do a single crochet, and that's going to make an invisible decrease, a very hidden way to decrease it down and make it smaller. So to do that, we're going to take our crochet hook, and I like to do this one stitch at a time. Just go into the front loop of the next stitch. You might need your nail for this, but just under this first front loop, and then under the second front loop. So you know, we're just under the front ones. Now, once you're under both those front loops, we yarn over, pull through those front loops, make sure to do a scoop, then yarn over again and pull through two to make like a regular single crochet into those front loops. That's called an invisible decrease. It's hard to tell where they're at, hence the name. <laughs> and we want to repeat that process three times in a row. So four single crochets and then an invisible decrease three times in a row. So let's do our second repeat. So four single crochets, one, two, three, and four, and then our invisible decrease. So we go front loop, front loop, and then yarn over, pull under those two front loops for a single crochet, yarn over again and pull through two loops. Okay, there's our second repeat. Let's do our third repeat. Four single crochets, one, two, three, and four, and then front loop, front loop, single crochet, and that's going to be our final invisible decrease. And that's gonna bring you down from 18 stitches down to 15 stitches. So you should have 15 stitches if you wanna count the Vs around. Okay, let's, we're just gonna leave this stitch marker for a sec um, I can just ignore it and know that this is the end of the round if we look down the rounds, okay? So instead of continuing to use the stitch marker for our final two rounds, we'll just leave it there so that it's easier to pull it out and get rid of it once we're done uh, with our piece. Okay, so for um, round eight, which is our uh, second to last round, we're going to single crochet five times. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to chain one. So we're gonna yarn over, pull through the loop for a chain. We're gonna skip the next stitch, so skip this one, and working into the stitch next to that, so not this one, but this one, we're gonna do a single crochet into that stitch. Boom. And now we're gonna do that one more time. So we're gonna chain one, and skip a stitch, and then single crochet into the next one. We're actually gonna be single crocheting into the remaining stitches. There should be, I believe, seven more stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. There you go. Now you might want to sew on the um, star now, but I'm going to actually try to finish this piece up uh, with all the gold first before I sew the star on. Let's see if we can do that. So I'm just going to stuff this um, stitch marker in the center so that it's out of our way. And we're going to do our final round, round nine. So for round nine, we're going to be working into the front loops of all of these stitches and into the holes of this chain space. And I'll explain the, the holes uh, when we get there. But into the front loops only. So remember how in our invisible decrease we worked only in those front loops? That's the only stitch we want to work into for all of the stitches around. And not like two front loops in, at, at a time. Just each front loop gets their own stitch until you get to these chain spaces. And then you're going to work into the center of the chain spaces. And into these front loops, we're going to start with just a single crochet to get used to it. So we're going to go only into the front loop right here like that. We're going to single crochet one, so yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. Okay, now into the next front loop, we're going to do a half double crochet. For a half double crochet, we're going to yarn over, 
So get a piece on the on our hook. Then we're going to go into the front loop of the next stitch right here. Yarn over again and pull a loop through that front loop. Then yarn over and finally pull a loop through all three loops on the hook. That's going to make a half double crochet. And we're going to do a half double crochet into the remaining of the stitches. Okay, so we're going to do 14 half double crochets in a row. So let's do another one right here. We're going to yarn over, go into the front loop, yarn over and pull through that front loop, then yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. There's two. One more time, slowly, yarn over, into the front loop, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do one more right here. Into the front loop, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through all those loops. Now we come to our first chain space. So remember how we chained one and skipped a stitch? You can see it right here. See how there's like this weird stitch there. So the best thing to do here is we're going to do another half double crochet, but we're going to work into the center of this stitch like that. So under that chain that you made instead of working only in the front loop. So we're going to yarn over, go under that chain, yarn over and pull through and yarn over and pull through three. And that's what we're going to do for both those chain spaces. And this is creating a little hole for us to put our, um, our ribbon through. Okay, so the next stitch we're going to work into the front loop again because it's not one of the chain spaces. So we're going to yarn over into the front loop only. All right, uh, right there. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through all three. And then here's our second hole. We're going to yarn over, go into the hole. Yarn over, pull under the hole. And then yarn over, pull through all three. Okay, so there you can see We've left, it, it's very hard to tell, but there's two little holes right there. Okay, so for the rest of these stitches, it's just working into the front loop, half double crochet. So we're yarning over into the front loop only, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through three. And we're just gonna keep doing that till we get to the end of this round. And we're almost done with the gold. And then we can just sew our piece together and, and add our ribbon. Okay, just a few more stitches here. Okay. One. And then, there we go. So that's gonna be the end of round nine, which is our final round. Now to finish up this piece before we sew on our uh, all of our pieces together, we're going to single crochet into the next stitch under both loops. We're gonna single crochet one. And then under both loops of the next next stitch right here, we're gonna do a slip stitch. So we're gonna yarn over, pull under that, and then keep that loop and pull it through the loop on the hook, like that. A little slip stitch. And now we're gonna cut the yarn. You don't need very much yarn, so just about that much. We're just gonna pull it all the way through and thread this on our needle. And we're gonna do a hidden end, like kind of like how we did on the star. We're gonna go into the back of the next stitch. So this is the next stitch right here. We're gonna go in through the back of it like so. And we're gonna go back down through where this is coming out. So right back down through that. And we're just gonna hide this end into some pieces on the, some stitches on the inside until you get through this, this bar here. That's gonna be the back loop that we didn't work into on our previous round. And this is just going to hide the end in and make it look just like our previous stitches so you can't really tell where the end is. Once you're into that, you can cut the yarn just about like that. You can cut it pretty damn close. Pretty dang close. Okay, so next up, we want to sew on the star on the front. So we're going to grab our star. And there should be two tail ends here, one that's slightly longer than the other one. First, we want to grab the shorter one. This should be the one coming straight through the center of the star. And we'll thread that on a needle. And we're just going to put that into the very center 
um, of our piece right in between. You, you got to find these two holes and that's going to be the front. Okay. Cause that's where the, the ribbon's going to be tied on. So we want to find just like somewhere under it, like right here so that it's right in the middle. And we're just going to go into our piece and pull that through and that should hold your star into place. Now you want to thread this other end on a needle. There we go. And we're just going to sew this star on by going into our piece. Okay, just hold it into place. Go behind it, and we're going to go into our piece somewhere. And we're going to come out where the corner of the star comes out, like right here. We're going to come out through the corner of our star. And then back down through the center of the star into your piece. And we're going to keep doing that all the way around it. So we're going to come out through where our next star end comes up, like right here, and then come out through the corner of the star. Try not to work around this tail end if you can. It doesn't really matter, but it'd make it easier for sewing things together later on. Okay, and we're just going to keep doing that. So we're going to go back down through the center. We're going to come out through where the next star top would come out, or would be. Go up through the star. Go back down through the center, out through the next place. And I'm just kind of eyeing it. Sometimes you can place the star there and you can go like, oh, okay, it's gonna come right there. That should be where it's sewn on. Up through the next corner of the star, back down through the center, and then one more corner. Let's see, where did we, yeah, let's go like right there. And come up through the corner of the star. Make sure it's sewn on really nice and tight. And then we're just gonna go right back down through the center Okay, make sure it's flat on our piece. And then we're just gonna take these two ends and we're gonna double knot them on the inside. Make sure it's double knotted nice and close in there. Now you can cut these two ends pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty close. And we're gonna take our needle we're gonna pull out these stitch markers. So I'm just gonna grab, grab this little blue end. We're just gonna pull that out and just pull it all the way out. Okay, so we have our, our bag almost finished. Now we just need to stuff it up a little bit before we sew on the um, red yarn. Now I'm just gonna use the extra ends that we had here and we're gonna stuff it up. If you wanna stuff it up with um, like fake coins, that's that'd be cool too. I actually have these um, golden buttons that I use for the for the treasure chest, so it'd be kind of fun to stuff one up with a bunch of gold buttons, um, something like that. But we're just gonna be using regular stuffing for this because I think it's a little bit easier. And you don't need too much stuffing. Let's go ahead and, that actually might be too much, so let's get a little bit less here. Yeah, that's still too much. You barely need any. So either extra threads of yarn or a little bit of stuffing. All right, and we'll place this stuffing to the side. Now you need just a little bit of our red yarn, maybe a couple feet's worth, not too much. And we're gonna take our crochet hook. And we're gonna go in through these two holes like that. And we're gonna yarn over with our red new red yarn and just pull that under those two holes we're gonna go around the outside with both of these ends. And we're gonna go back into the hole with our crochet hook, grab a hold of the end that went around, pull that through. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. 
grab a hold of the other end right here, pull that through. So you can see it kind of doubles up the, the, the threads there. And now you can pull it tight, make sure the stuffing's inside, pull it nice and tight, and it should pull the whole bag tight. And then we'll just, we'll just make a knot like you would uh, tying your shoe right um, on the front here. So we're just gonna do a double, or first do a regular knot like that. And now we're just going to do a loop, go around the loop. We're gonna make the loop nice and loose originally, and then we're gonna make it a little smaller afterwards. So we're gonna go around the loop, pull under, pull it tight. Okay, so obviously this is way too big, but what we wanna do is we wanna pull this loop nice and tight first, and then we're gonna pull these ends to shorten the loop. About like that long, that's probably good. Well, maybe a little bit shorter because it's gonna be pull a little tighter. And then once you have it the, the size you want, grab each of the loops and pull it really tight so that it doesn't come loose. And we can cut these two ends nice and close. And there you go. Maybe we'll mess with that a little bit. All right, so that's how you crochet a little miniature bell bag from Animal Crossing. And again, if you like this video, please like and subscribe down below. If you want more Animal Crossing themed patterns, visit clubcrochet.com slash Animal Crossing. We have Gulliver here, and soon we'll have this giant bell bag pattern. I love it so much. I'm gonna try to make a huge one using bulky yarn so that it's like a pillow. Um, obviously this takes a lot longer than these little mini ones, but I wanna make one. I wanna make a bunch of these mini ones and stuff stuff them into this big one and then so that way I have a I'm gonna stuff a giant bell bag with this bell bag and then these little bell bags into this bigger bell bag so it's gonna be bell bags all the way down <laughs> that would be kind of fun okay well thanks again for watching um pasta la pizza and happy hooking uh thank you guys so much for watching this video and make sure to um share a picture with me using hashtag club crochet or tagging club dot crochet on instagram or me at Louis Loops on Instagram, or posting in the Facebook group, which you can find in the description below. Thanks again for watching. Pasta la pizza and happy hooking. Bye. Cha-ching.